evaluate where you are. Look at it, assess yourself. Assess yourself and assess the situation. What brought you there? What has brought you to this point? What did you learn from it? Are you learning anything? Or are you doing it over and over and over again? Somebody said that insanity is doing the same thing in the same way, expecting a different outcome. Don't let this year be like last. And if last year was great, still don't let it be that way. Raise the standard. If your life is perfect and extraordinary, you darn well know you're not going to be happy unless you keep making it better. That's what makes us feel alive. It's not what we get that makes us happy. It's who we become and what we're able to give because we become more. If you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. You're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow, so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? If there's anything that'll shift your life, that'll get you to thrive in a difficult situation, is take some massive action. Try something else. Change it, try it, move it. Progress equals happiness. If you can start to make progress, if you can get yourself going, even if it's not perfect, if it doesn't work, you know what to do. Just change your approach. If that doesn't work, change your approach. So often in life, people don't begin the journey because they're not quite sure what to do or how to do it right or how to do it perfect. You want to change your body? Get yourself moving. Don't wait for the perfect trainer. Just go out here and move. Put on your shoes and move and get momentum. I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation. The other thing is take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. Someone said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. And so all you're looking for are new breakthroughs through practice and practice and practice. You'll get better and better and better. And there's still some things that will happen to you that will catch you on the blind side that you did not anticipate. You'll get knocked down, but you won't be knocked out. And so I say to you, it's possible you can live your dream if it's becoming a diamond, if it's having more, if it's achieving more, if it's being a better father, being a better mother, whatever it is, overcoming addiction, changing our society. It's possible you can live your dream. It's necessary that you have a plan of action, that you're resilient, that you stick to, and you work with the system, that you work with people, that you give support, and that you be there for them, that you have the vision and never give it up, that you become creative and relentless and keep on coming back again and again and again, and that it's you that you've got to take personal responsibility to make it happen, and that it's hard, easy is not an option, and when life knocks you down, jump back up and say, it's not over until I win people and situations that upset you see there's some people that know just how to push your button they know just what to say but I'm not going to expend any energy arguing with anybody life is too short ladies and gentlemen and unpredictable I don't want to spend my time arguing with anybody so I avoid situations that will get me upset I don't argue with people draw the line ladies and gentlemen there are certain things that we just go through life just taking and at some point you just got to draw the line and just say enough is enough you got to do that with yourself one negative stroke is 16 times more powerful than a positive stroke and if you have people around you who are not sensitive to who you are and the people that can hurt you the most, ladies and gentlemen, are the people that you love, that you love.
They're the ones that you're vulnerable to. They're the ones that can get to you. And if they're insensitive, I don't care who they are. See, if you don't draw the line with people, if you just let them run rampant in your life, and you let things happen to you that you don't feel good about, if you continue to allow it to happen, you won't feel good about yourself. Your image of yourself will erode. So you've got to draw the line. Why do people just go to a job where they're miserable, day in and day out? Why do people stay together and they're miserable, sleeping in separate rooms, or arguing, or the only thing they have in common is paying the bills? Don't talk, don't communicate, don't share anything together. Day in and day out, as short and unpredictable that life is, being mean to each other. Why do people do that? Known hells are preferable to strange heavens because it's familiar. See, life is rough, ladies and gentlemen. It's rough and it's scary. It's scary growing. It's scary taking a chance. It's scary acting on your intuition, on your guts. It's scary. It's frightening. There are people that are tolerating things right now and they're immobilized by fear. They can see the hammer coming and they're afraid to even move because it's scary. To go against the dominant thinking of your family, friends, and those people you associate with every day is perhaps the most difficult act of courage you will ever perform. See, when you start growing, when you start changing the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you respond to things, the way you use your time, when you start saying, no, I can't do that, why? You, you're too busy, you don't have the time, no, I have my own agenda. See, if, if people can put you on a guilt trip, they will. And use you and abuse you over and over and over again, you gotta draw the line. You have to draw the line on them. Don't go through life feeling like you're powerless. Victims are people that are powerless. You're not powerless. You are powerful. You direct the power in your life. Whatever your life is right now, it is a duplication of your consciousness. It's a result of how you have decided to use your power. That's all it is. That's not who you are. That's just a perverted use of your power that you aren't satisfied with. And you've got the power to change that. Wherever you are, how? I don't know. But I know you've got the power to do that. But you don't know what has happened to me. It really doesn't matter what has happened to you. See, the only thing that really matters is what are you going to do about it? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. You can allow it to destroy you or you can allow it to build you up. We never get to a level where we feel that there's nothing else for us to do, that we've achieved certain number of goals and we figure that we're through. No, no. You don't want to stay there and celebrate too long like a lot of people do. They do something they consider outstanding. They go around talking about what they used to do. See, let me tell you, I used to do this and I used to do that. Excuse me, used to bees don't make no honey. What are you doing now? You're still here breathing. That means you've got some more to give. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter about where you are, doesn't matter about what you have, doesn't matter about what you've done. Life is about growing, it's about being productive, it's about stretching, it's about challenging yourself. So you start looking around and decide, hey, hey, wh what else do I want to do? What, what got me here? It's a time for celebration, but also a time for reflection. What got me here? What worked? What did not work? What do I need to do to repeat so that I can get the same kind of results in other areas of my life? If the goal is to improve my health, if the goal is to improve my relationship, if the goal is to improve my income, if the goal is to improve something in society, what is it I need to do? Now don't get confused with what you do with who you are. Don't trip. Don't go on some type of ego trip by talking about how bad you are. None of us do anything by ourselves. Develop an appreciation for external support as well as good fortune, because all of those things play a role. And the other thing is, don't go overboard celebrating. You must 
meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. You look at it, hey, I did it. I, I feel good about that. Now you're moving on to the next thing. Things did not work out the way you wanted them to work out. You didn't produce the results you wanted to produce. Hey, miss that. Win some, you lose some. Next, moving right on. Don't confuse who you are with what you do. And make your mind fertile ground for the seeds of opportunity. Think if you want to experience a sense of fulfillment, you've got to have an open mind so that ideas can come in there and take root and grow.